Hey guys, I just wanted to get on here to make sure you knew where we were at with our work. Hold on one second, it's loading. Um, I know we had a rough, what was that Friday? The, it was very tricky to, um, with technology, everything was going a little wackadoo. So I wanted to take a moment and go over hopefully what you got from that. I know I did have a pre-recorded video. Um, let's see here. We were on slide five on Friday. Ooh, this is weird looking. Kind of came up in a different way. I would like to be on slide five. So um, what I was hoping would happen from uh, the other day, I played the video, I recorded it. So if you haven't seen it yet, when you click into our assignment, Mystery Science, uh, CER, um, and Race Right, if you click in there and you go to slide five, there's a little video on there. It's not loading on my PowerPoint version of it, but there's a video that explains what a black hole is. Now, um, I don't expect you guys to have the exact answer for that, but um, Doug does explain it pretty thoroughly, actually. And so your job is to write as best you can a paragraph using this information, the restate, answer the question, cite your evidence, and explain your thinking. So I'm thinking like five sentences at least to show me that you know or at least heard what Doug said about black holes. If you're still feeling like you don't get it, make sure you let me know and we can kind of talk it through a little more. Um, but the real reason I'm on here right now is to tell you a little bit more about question six, or sorry, slide six, uh, mystery science question, why can't fish breathe on land? So my plan was to share that with you. Let me reshare this. So it gives me another, like a better option. I'm gonna show you how I got here. So I'm just gonna do it through teams. Um, block one, science and social studies. I'm going to go to Mystery Science, CER, and Race Right. I'm going to open up that bad boy into Student View. And so, see, this was the instructions. These were the instructions I was talking about last week, I believe Friday. And then um, here is our CER and Race Right. I'm going to open it in just regular old PowerPoint. I'm going to have to reshare it though, because it likes to jump out in a different direction. It likes to keep me on my toes, let's just say that. So when I open it, it looks a little something like this. This is slide six. For this one specifically, I'm not going to walk through it with you guys. Um, I will play the video for you in just a moment so you can kind of hear what Doug has to say about why fish can't breathe on land. Um, you're going to do the exact same thing that you did with the black hole. You're going to listen. You're going to restate the question. Fish can't breathe on land because, and then you're going to answer the question. Citing your evidence is easy peasy because we only have one source. It is our mystery science we'll listen to. And then you're going to explain your thinking. So let me, I'm going to open this up the way I, I do it. I don't know. I'm sure you guys have a better way. I press play. And then when it comes up with those three little dots, I say copy video video URL, allow access. So I copied it and then I'm gonna open it up in um, Google Chrome. And then I'm gonna copy and paste. And this thing's asking, where is your shared window? So I'm guessing I'm not sharing the right screen because it opens 10 screens, haha. <laughs> okay, this looks better. Mm, except for, did I share the sound? Too many steps means more mistakes being made, huh? All right, I'm gonna mute myself and I'm gonna press play here. Hi, it's Doug. Near my house is this statue of a fish. Uh, it always makes me smile when I walk by it. I don't know why, but there's just something silly to me about seeing a statue of a fish. It's probably the only time you're going to see a fish on land. Or is it? Someone named Lamar has a question about fish. Let's give him a call now. Hi, Doug. Hi, Lamar. I have a question for you. Why can't fish breathe on land? 
That's a great question. Here's something you have to check out next time you see fish, like in a pond you find at a park. Every once in a while, you can see certain fish doing this. You see this? They're coming up to the surface and opening their mouths. But why would a fish come up to the surface and open its mouth like this? What do you think? Now would be a good time to pause the video and discuss. Okay, you ready? Well, there are a few different reasons a fish might do this. Now, if you didn't know better, you might even think that the fish are coming up for air. And it's true, every animal has to breathe, even fish. But you might have heard that fish don't breathe the same way that land animals do. In order to breathe, fish use these, their gills. Surprisingly, there are tiny bubbles of air in the water, and gills help fish to collect up those tiny air bubbles. Most fish actually can't breathe using their mouth. They have to use their gills. The gills need to be in water in order to work, which is why fish die when they're out of water for too long. So why do these fish look like they're coming up to the surface and gulping air? Well, if you've ever caught a fish to eat, you might have seen inside of one. Inside a fish are many of the same organs that most animals have, a stomach, a heart, but you'll also find this strange thing here. Fish seem to have this inner body part that we don't have. It's these two little things that look like pillows or pouches, and they're connected to a long tube that connects to the fish's mouth. This organ is what's called the fish's swim bladder. Now that might sound like a strange name for a body part, a swim bladder, but you know, if you're a fish, few things are more important than being good at swimming. Scientists were able to figure out that when certain fish come up to the surface like this and gulp air, some of that air goes into their swim bladder. They fill their swim bladder up with air, kind of like when you fill up a pool floaty with air. If you're a fish and you wanna swim near the water's surface without working too hard, okay, just gulp a bunch of air and it will help you stay near the top layer of water without having to constantly swim. Wanna sink down towards the bottom? No problem, burp the air out and you sink down lower to the bottom. Isn't that convenient? But some fish do something really surprising. Watch what these fish do. Whoa, you see that? These fish actually come up onto the land and spend time on land. How is this possible? Don't fish die if they're out of water for very long? Most fish do, but fish like these are special. These fish are called mud skippers. And there's a few other kinds of fish that can do this as well. Fish like these can actually come up out of the water and survive on land. It turns out some of these fish, like this catfish, are able to breathe on land by using their swim bladder, the same way that people and land animals use our lungs. They breathe air directly into their body. They don't need to use their gills. Now think about this for a second. That means if these fish can use their swim bladders the same way that you or I use our lungs, does that mean you or I could use our lungs the same way fish use their swim bladders? Actually, we can. As long as you're a good swimmer and you've got adult supervision, give this a try next time you go swimming in a pool. If you empty all the air out of your lungs, watch as you sink down to the bottom. But if you come up and fill your lungs with air, watch as it helps you stay closer to the top of the pool. So in summary, most fish can't breathe on land because they use their gills to breathe and gills only work in the water. But some fish actually can breathe on land for small amounts of time, such as by using their swim bladder to act like a lung. That's all for this week's question. Thanks Lamar for asking it. There are mysteries all around us. Stay curious and see you next week. Still muted. So hopefully that helps answer that question. So once you feel confident in that, like, yes, I know what this is asking, or maybe you don't, maybe you're thinking, holy moly, I'm more confused now than I was. Go ahead and go back and uh, watch the video a few times if you need to. I know I definitely have to do that at times. Um,
But with that slide six, that's going to be one I'm not going to help you with, not because I don't love you to pieces, but I wanted to see how well you guys could write a paragraph answering that. And if you feel like Doug didn't answer that, because you know what? Sometimes Doug does not answer the question. I know that can be very frustrating, but if you feel he didn't answer the question sufficiently, um, just explain what you do know. Maybe um, why can't fish breathe on land? I'm not sure why fish can't breathe on land because that's still you answering the question and restating it. But what I do know is this, this, and this, and Doug says this, so maybe it's this, right? So you can actually explain it without 100% answering the question, just like Doug does. So um, for that slide six, that's going to be one I can't really help you with. I can reword the questions for you, um, but I just want to see what you're able to do on your own. All right, so again, if you guys have questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you soon. Bye.